Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque Painting Live on Thursday, July 15th at 7 p.m. Central Time. So I guess that means we're already in the middle of July, in the middle of the summer. Time's going fast. So this is our July ornaments all painted up and done. Um, so we are going to be unboxing the box so any new people can see how the box comes. Um, this is a great box for anyone that's getting back into ceramics or anyone that's um, new and learn, wanting to learn different techniques. Um, we have two sets of ornaments, actually two, three sets of two ornaments, which were two sets of ornaments. It was a set of um, three girls and three boys. Let me switch them around here. Um, so the top ones were the boys and the bottom ones were the girls and then I split them up into two sets of three and the blue set um, we'll, we'll color wash and dry brush. The middle red and green set we are going to paint out and antique and then the purple set we are going to base coat and then dry brush and paint also a little bit. Um, so we're doing color washing, base coating and painting out um, the color washing so it's um, a good box to start with if you're like on the fence and wondering what you should do. Um, so we'll push these aside. Um, you do get the snow and the glitter and the strings. So we'll push those aside. Um, so when your box comes, it comes in a priority or first class. Uh, what's priority. it? Huh? Priority. Priority first priority box. Um, so you have tracking and insurance on it. Um, Courtney always has a nice quote on the top this week month. It was life is better when you're crafting and then inside that You will find your inventory sheet um, And any other little extras that may be in the box. So for July through December we have nylon painting brushes and Then we also have our instruction sheet is in there and actually there's probably several instruction seats looks like she probably had to get them all on a separate one. I actually haven't even looked at this part of the box yet. Um, I was busy cleaning and firing ornaments and Courtney and the girls um, packed everything for us. So if you open that up you will find your inventory sheet which is right here, our paint list, any extras that are in there. And then we do our own technique sheets and Courtney does all this for us. Uh, takes the pictures of our ornaments and puts them in there and then you have step-by-step -step instructions along with your color list um, So hopefully you guys are finding that helpful And then we have our nice little um, Nylon painting brush. We've done dry brushes the last two years. So this year we switched to a nylon painting brush um, Let's see And the nylon brushes are for um, base coating or painting stuff out. Um, so this, you want to take your cap off and just throw that out. That's just to protect the brush while it's being shipped. Put everything in one pile for her here. So then this is a size 8. And then there is sizing in there. So you're going to want to wash that out in water a little bit. And then I like to pat it dry. And then I like to groom it to a point always. Um, so then your brush is ready for painting. Then you also will find in your box a wire and we will use the wire to put our um, string through our ornaments. So you want to make sure you hold on to that. Then we have our little goodie bag and of course Courtney found some cute little snowflakes bags to go with our snowmen and women. And inside there you'll find some more goodies. Um, so some boxes have more goodies than others. It just all depends upon the box. Um, so we do have our no fire snow in here in a little container. And then we use two glitters, the white glitter and the silver glitter. So you'll find that. And then we also have our rat tail satin um, strings. So you want to hold on to all that stuff until um, we get to the point where you're um, working on that. Then Courtney has all your little ornaments nicely wrapped and I'll probably need a scissors Courtney um, so she's got them all labeled and bubble wrapped really well 
So we have our snowflake lady, our gifts, gifts, gifts. We have our um, holly lady and our skiing guy, our snowman sledding, our snowman skiing, and our snowman with our broom. And then you just have to open them all up. And they are packed really well. We've been really fortunate with breakage over the last two years and not had a whole lot. So here's your nice piece of um, white bisque that the detail has been put back in. Cordy's been um, dust them and inspects them. So make sure you guys get top quality bisque. And so you will just open all these up really quick here. So I hope you guys had a good week. Hope you're looking forward to tonight. Um, we will have a little show and tell of our August box. Um, it's the sample piece, and I actually do need to do a new sample because we're changing a couple things on it, but I know you guys are waiting um, to see it. Um, so we'll um, show it to you, and then you'll we'll be able to purchase it if you want. You can just go on Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com. We'll do that at the end of the show tonight. Um, it's really um, one of the boxes I'm really looking forward to because we're doing a new technique and actually two, two, two new techniques. One will be the base coating of it and then um, something else that's really special and I think you guys are like going to be really, really happy because I'm really, really happy. And I'm actually hoping that we sell out the box. That's how how thrilled I am with it. So let me get our us lined up here. We have the sled and the snowflake goes together. The skis and the holly girl goes together. But you can match these up any way you want. You can paint them any way you want. You can paint them all with the color wash. You can antique them all. Um, it's totally up to you. So those are your six ornaments. And we will start with our color washing one, and then we will go to our purple painted set. Um, that way the color washing set can dry. And then we'll um, probably work on the red and green the ne next time. So that's where we will start with tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. So color wash is a product that used to be available. Courtney, I need the cart for some foil. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so color wash again is <coughs> excuse me a product that used to be available. <coughs> excuse me, I have to take a drink. <clears throat> and is no longer available, um, along with a lot of other things that we use in the ceramic world. So we make our own color wash, and basically it is 50% paint to 50% water. Um, so I have in my bowl, which is probably hard to see, about a tablespoon of paint, of water, and I really don't even need that much, I don't think. Um, I dumped it out. And then um, for our blue ornaments, I use navy, um, but you can do whatever you, whatever you guys want to do, so feel free to do whatever you want. I had to use blue because I like blue, so we have our navy, OS460 navy. So now, now I'm going to add about the same amount of um, paint to my water. And I'm trying to get just a tablespoon because it's not going to take a whole lot to do these guys. Um, usually at the classroom I have a, a bottle, actually a pint jar mixed up with um, colored washes. And then I just use from there. Um, so now my, my paint brush, my nylon painting brush that you got in your box, I'm actually going to use that. That's been dipped in the water and it's already conditioned. That keeps the paint from drying um, inside the bristles and then going up into the ferrule. Um, so now I'm just going to stir my paint and water up. And you can use this same recipe for your antiquing solutions and you can use any color you want. Um, so that kind of makes it really nice. So I just want to mix this up really nice, really good. Um, color washing is kind of um, messy on your hands, so if you um, need to wear gloves, you may want to wear um, rubber gloves. So when I color wash, I usually do, um, I just want to put my jar at an angle, or my bowl at an angle, because i got a big bowl. And then you have a sponge, 
and then a, a bowl of water to dip your sponge in and we'll wring that out really what really well so it's nice and dry um, so this is color washing and I tend to like to start on the back so if I mess it up it's not blobbed up in the front so I'm gonna just paint my navy blue on here just kind of slop it on there so it's covered the whole area um, I tend to do about a three by three area I'll probably do a little bit bigger here and you just get it all covered with your navy blue then I take my damp sponge and I wipe across the top of all my texture so you can see that it's taking some of that navy off the top and just leaving it down in the crevices so now you don't want to do the whole piece at once because it, some of it will dry too much on you and you won't be able to wipe it away. Um, so I wring out my um, sponge a little bit after a few wipes so that I can get back to kind of a clean sponge to wipe that navy off. So now we'll turn him on the sides and we'll just keep working our way right around. So again, I probably won't do the whole front um, just so that it doesn't dry too much on me. And I get my bottom and down in my um, hole there on top. And again, I just wipe across all my little textures, wring out my sponge every now and then. So we're just taking the darkest color off the high areas and that'll just make our dry brushing go a lot quicker and we'll wring that out again and now we'll go back to our paint our color wash mixture and just kind of paint the last of it in and you want to make sure you get in all your little crevices you don't want any little white areas um, or little um, little specks, little white flea, we call them fleas because when you're dry brushing that's going to really um, show up that you miss that. Again, take your sponge and just wipe across all your little textures, wring it out once in a while. And then just keep wiping, kind of get all the high spots wiped and just leaving your navy down in your... Um, crevices so now I can see I had too much paint or too much water in my sponge there it kind of ran all over and you just want it kind of even so now you can see all my high areas are wiped and then all our navy is down in our textures and if I want to go back and put more on the back um, or a spot that's really light you cannot wring out your um, sponge and just use the paint that's in there and kind of lay it back on there and that'll um, put the color back on there too. So now we'll set this aside and let it dry. I will wring out my sponge again. And you can see it's messy with the fingers so um, usually when I'm color washing I, I do a whole bunch at one time and then they're a, that way they can dry. Um, dry brushing goes on a lot nicer or easier if you can um, do it do it and then let your piece dry a little bit before you go right to dry brushing it so you can see I'm getting into all those little holes sometimes you have to dab again take my damp sponge and just wipe across my textures so again this is called color washing so now it did run here so I want to wipe that so that doesn't get too dark that's why I only do a little area at a time. And then we can come to our side. Looks like I got a piece of paper towel in there. Get your hole on the bottom. And then I'll do just part of the front and then wipe and then do the other part just so that it doesn't dry too much and then you can't wipe it. Um, you just brush back and forth. Sometimes you have to dab up and down to get into the little crevices. So again, it was a color wash was made with 50% acrylic paint and 50% water. 
Um, that's the mixture I use. Other people may have other mixture, other percentages that they use, um, but that's pretty much what I do. And it, it doesn't have to be exact either. It's um, pretty forgiving. Um, so that's kind of just what I use and what works. So now we'll go back into our color wash and finish out this side. Pretty, can you get me a, like a wet rag to wipe my hands on? Thank you. And again, we'll take our damp sponge and just wipe again. If it's dripping all over, you didn't wring out your rag enough. And you can let like the down the background, you can leave that darker too if you want. It's really kind of up to you what you want to do. You could do all six of your ornaments like this or um, just do these two or do two different ones. It really don't matter. We're pretty um, flexible. All right, so now he's all done and looks. So now that was really white there. I just wiped across it with my um, sponge before I wring it out. That way there's color in the sponge and it'll put some color back on wherever there's too much out. Wiped out. So there we go. We have our color washed um, first set all done and pretty. So now we'll set this aside. And Courtney's got some wipes here. Um, so now I do have a little bit left over. So um, normally I would just put that back um, in a separate jar so it's not contaminating your good jar. Um, we'll probably just dump that out though tonight because I'm at Courtney's. So. And then you do want to um, wash out your brush. And then maybe Courtney will get me fresh water now that I got the mess all made here. So let's wipe this up. And Courtney's got some wipes for me. So you can see it does stain your hands. So if you um, want, you can use gloves. Um, oh, those are really wet wipes. Wow. <laughs> And we'll wipe the table off. Just new water for painting now. Thank you. Like there's like I could wring water out of these buggers. All right. So you can see it does stain stain you up. So um, you might want to wear gloves. I usually don't. It's just part of my daily mess that I get into. No, that's okay. I got it on the paper towel. I'll probably just need some paper towel. I don't want to stain your rag all up. I want to that ocean there. You got an ocean? No. <laughs> Those are really wet. I never had wipes that wet. That was the last one. Oh, that's why. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So then we'll go to our other second set, which is our purple set. And now we will make sure I got the right sets here. We will just, we are just going to paint those purple. So these are actually really um, easy ornaments, pretty quick to make. Like you could make a ton of those, um, color washing them and even doing it this way. Um, so we have our OS452 purple. If you have a darker purple, you could use that too. Um, Duncan doesn't carry a darker purple anymore, so this is the purple I did use. Um, so OS452 purple. And then to make it darker, I did add a few drops of black to it. So that's another way you can make your purple darker. Uh, but you want to make sure you make enough when you do that. Because it'll be hard to go back and uh, match it. So I have a pretty good pile of purple. Probably a good tablespoonful. Again, it's OS452 purple. And then I'm going to take some black OS476. And put maybe two drops in there, three drops with a little lock one, two, three. And then if I got my palette knife, I don't have my cart tonight. Thank you. Oh, just flew out, knocked it out of her hand. Then if you have your palette knife, which we get, had in one of your boxes. Um, I like to use the palette knife to mix up my paint instead of my um, brush so that we don't wreck the bristles in our brush. Um, so we're going to just mix up our purple and darken it a little bit. So when I'm making 
Um, my own colors, I usually add the dark color to the pile of the white, the lighter color, because it takes less of the dark color than the light color. So if I had to put a pile of black down and added three drops of purple, I would have probably ended up needing a half a container of my purple. So I put my purple down first, which is my lighter color and then added my three drops of black to it. So you can see we have a, a darker uh, purple now. So if, when you're making color, you just wanna make sure you make enough. And then I do like to add my dark color to my light color. And then I use my palette knife so I don't wreck the bristles in my brushes. Can you put the finished ones in the frame? Huh? Put the finished ones in the frame. You can see. Oh, Courtney wants me to move these so you can see them. All right, so there we have our purple. So now I'm going to take my painting brush that was in our um, box, and we're just going to paint these purple, the whole thing. So I'm just going to grab some paint and brush back and forth. You want to brush it out so it's nice and smooth and you don't have um, ridges. And then you may have to dab in a few spots to get rid of any little... Um, white fleas because there is a lot of texture on these guys. So we'll just paint them purple quick. Um, so this is base coating. This is just another way of putting your first coat on your pieces. It's instead of the um, color washing, you can see it's a lot less messier on your hands. Um, I tend to like to base coat. Although I do like to do my snowmen and penguins and any kind of snow stuff with the color washing. So we're just going to dab her a little bit and get our white spots filled in. And then as it dries, we end up with more white spots. So you have to go back and look at it from a couple different angles usually. Get down in your hole where your threads go. Um, I have some blue in my paint yet. But that's okay from my, didn't wash my brush with my Harold's brush pad, so I got some paint in there yet. So I'm just going to work my way around my ornament, paint the sides and brush back and forth. So this is just base coating or painting out your piece. So if your instructions say that, that's it's just covering the piece with the paintbrush with one on, um, in this case, we're just doing one color. So we'll brush them out. And we'll kind of hold them carefully so we don't have our hand in the paint. So I hope everyone had a good week. It's been a busy week again. Um, some pallets of clay and talc came and... Um, some molds came. They were your September boxes, which is Donna molds. So, you, again, we always use new molds for our boxes. Uh, and then a few other things. We did get, um, I thought we had 12 more Donna inserts ordered, but there were 10, 10. So we probably had to cut the budget a little bit and cut back a little. But we have some fall ones. We have the hunting lodge one, um, the honeybees. The dragonflies, the frog. I'm trying to think what I all seen when I was I put I did pour them this morning because you may be able to add those to your um, August box. Um, so I don't have a drying my drying rack here, so I'm just going to stick a um, paintbrush up in there, and then I can hold that um, snug with my finger up in there and the paintbrush, and that way I'm not don't have my fingers in the paint and. Cordy grabbed me the drying rack, so I'll just use one of the stakes off of there. And we do have, um, we're hoping to have those back later this fall. Um, we're kind of waiting for the price of wood to go down and then for our woodworker to have time. So again, I'm just painting our purple here. And it looks like I could have mixed up a little bit more. So you probably want about a tablespoon and a half mixed up. 
Let's see what else was on that order. There were some pumpkins, three little pumpkins from Donna's. Um, some parts for a couple other molds that we've collected along the way and um, didn't have the parts to. One was a, col a course, a baby colt, and we didn't have the head to it, but I know the the body's the most expensive part, so we picked up the, the body, but um, we needed the head, so I ordered that, and then that came. Um, what else? I think there was a rabbit ear. that we It was a big rabbit that we needed the ear for, so... And not, I mean, it wasn't a lot of moles, but it was, the price adds up really quick, that's for sure. And then we have our clay. We should be good with our clay till December. Um, I don't know, there's rumors up there that there's a shortage. I don't know that there really is with the talc or not. I think maybe in some areas there are, are where one of the mines probably closed and... But um, we get ours from Evans Ceramics, so we're we're fine. So I'm just brushing out our purple here that we darkened up a little bit. And getting on all the little um, little flea areas that keep popping up after it dries. So let's see, I had some molds in the garage that I've been kind of working around for the last two years because they're big and heavy and I didn't want to move them. So my um, great nephews came and they actually poured a couple pieces that they wanted and then they helped me with a couple that I had, so that was nice. Um, being that big fairy, that's I think the heaviest mold I own. Although um, we do have the big fox and that's probably pretty comparable to the fairy mold. So let's see, that's looking pretty good. Just going back and getting any little white spots as it dries because those will show up when we're dry brushing. And now I can put that on my little drying rack. And then I'm going to need more purple here so we're going to have to mix up some more. And since it's not on the same piece it's okay, okay we'll, we'll get close to the same color. But that is why you do want to make enough when, when you're making it. One, two, three. Let's see, I'm pouring stuff for our, I think Courtney wants to call it the Add It To My Box show. Huh? Oh, so Cardi says the inserts that I was just talking about are for that welcome rock that we did, I think, in the January box. Or, but, if, you or if you have one of the baskets, they have a, also have a basket. Um, there's a rock, a basket, a clock, um, watering can, canisters, a mail thing. Um, we did get the smaller basket, but. I have to look in the molds because I, I don't think we got the lid for it, so I may have to call and have them send the lid because it's just a little piece. Will you have that ready for the show or are you too late? Oh no, they'll. I already poured them today. Oh, okay. Well, no, their molds, their molds come nice and dry, so nope, I poured them today already, so they will be ready for our um, add it to the box or whatever we're going to call our. Okay. Yep, okay. So well, yep, they're, um, they'll be ready. Pour them today. Um, there's some a couple fall ones in there. There's one with acorns on it, one with pheasants on it. Um, so I think I got it pretty close to where we had it. So we're just going to go back and paint our other one up here now. And because it's two different pieces, it's okay if they're just a little bit off. But I think it's pretty close. Let's see, I've been pouring some ghosts. Some other Donna's Halloween stuff. Um, a couple Native American things. The hand in hand scarecrows and ghosts. So we'll have a nice variety of stuff when we um, do our little sellathon or whatever it's going to be. Um, Courtney, we don't have the date set, but Courtney and I'll get that figured out tomorrow and then she can post it so you guys know. 
No, there's probably not. Only probably two left. <laughs> like the month is going by. So I don't know if we're going to have to is do the it. Is too tight for you? Um, next Thursday or the 29th? Um, we can do it next Thursday because I'll ha I can have one of everything in bisque for you, and then I'll okay. just I'll have the number of how many I have poured, and then I can just finish cleaning everything. So next Thursday. Um, so okay, we just decided on the day next Thursday, the twenty second. After our um, painting live, we will go into the bisque group again, and then start over with the. Uh, we'll do an after party. I'll do some giveaways. So. Um, we'll do an after party like we did last time with some giveaways. Um, Courtney did get a, our brush order did come in and she was surprised. She has a big surprise for you guys. So I would say you better make sure you join in because we got something in that we've been waiting for. So something we had ordered and didn't come and now it came. So and Courtney says if you, if you owe, she owes you one because we didn't get enough when we ordered them. Um, you'll be getting it in your box in August. So mm -hmm. So it'll be a fun night, plus she'll have some giveaways again. So that'll be next Thursday after our painting live. So I like to just stick my little stick up there, and then I can stick my finger in there. You can use your paintbrush, too, if you don't have um, any little dolls or anything. It just keeps it from spinning around on you all the time. And then we'll um, get a restocked of these, of our drying racks, hopefully come fall here too. So I'm just brushing out our purple that we made on our little snowman here. So this again is base coating or painting it out. Um, so we're using purple instead of black a lot of times like for the wildlife. Um, and a lot of other pieces, it, you see people base coating black, or you hear that you have to use black to um, dry brush. You have to base coat black to dry brush. So this is kind of why I'm doing that too. You do not have to use black to dry brush. Um, so here we're using purple, so we're going to show you that you can use other colors to base coat when dry brushing. It does not have to be black. Um, that's why I chose the purple. Um, and really, I wouldn't want to use black um, dry base coat, or like the base coating color for my snowmen because they would end up kind of grayish with a grayish hue to them or now they're going to have more of a purpley hue to them or a, the blue hue um, so it's kind of it's all personal preference but it's just to show you guys you can do do stuff in different ways it doesn't have to be the black um, like I said some people think that you can only dry brush over black and it's not true well you can try anything we're just touching up our little white fleas that keep popping up here. So you want to look at your piece from the top down and from the bottom up because you'll see those different little white spots as it dries from the different angles. So next, mark your calendars for next Thursday after our painting for the bisque and other thing show. So, Car Paula asks if we have charcoal. Pretty sure Courtney's got charcoal. Sure but, um, but I would say to wait Please until wait Thursday until. night. So that's another thing that might be going on on Thursday night. Um, we have charcoal, ash, and gray, actually. But you'll want to wait till Thursday night. And she did stock up on it pretty darn good, so... So that's another thing. So it won't just be bisque on our little show show things. It'll be other things too. So um, pretty sure a lot of you need charcoal because we, um, we've been out of the charcoal, ash, and gray for several months and haven't been able to get it. So so we got a question. Courtney says, "Let's see. Uh, the tablet's black. I can't see it." That's okay. Courtney's got to make the tablet viewable for me. Hold on. So I'm just making sure every little white spot is covered with our purple. And then I'm going to set it aside. I think it died. Huh? I think it, died. it died. 
And then we're going to go back and look at our other one. So now as this dried, um, you'll find that there's a few little white spots here and there. And you just want to go back and dab those and touch them up. So Courtney's getting the tablet up for me. I think our electric devices need replacing because they're uh, my phone's not charging today and the tablet takes forever to bring it up so we'll go back now and check the other one so what does it say Amanda if I wanted more of a blue hue for the snow snowman what color would I base coat with if you want more of a blue hue I did you could just base coat it with the with navy navy without doing the um, color wash um, instead, just paint it navy like I'm painting the purple. Um, so this one, this is the blue hue with the color wash. But you can um, just base coat it with navy instead of thinning it and making the color wash also. So hopefully that helps. So those guys look pretty good. I'm going to come back and look at this guy again. Those little spots just like to turn up. All right, so now I'm going to wash my brush out. So now we're actually going to let those. Oh, whoop, I see some purple that's not got that's got white. They just like to pop up them little buggers. That's why I call them fleas, because they're pesty like fleas. So I'm just going to wash my brush out. And now we're actually going to let our blue and our purple dry until next week. So I'm just going to put them on their little racks. So this is the blue and the purple. So the blue we color washed. So you can see we have a, um, we can see our high higher spots on our color wash has been wiped off. And then our navy is down in our crevices. Our purple, we just base coated or painted it out with our purple, and then we'll be dry brushing it. Um, so you can see that's a, a big difference. So this will dry brush a little bit quicker because the high areas have been wiped of the dark color, and this one is going to take a little bit more, um, but it's really not that much. So we'll let those guys sit. And now we're going to move on to our white ones because we're going to let those purple ones and blue ones dry until next week because then they're going to dry brush a lot easier for us. So now we have our instructions for our um, red and green ones and we're going to paint our white areas white. And then these guys are actually completely painted out and then they are antiqued with black brown made into like a color wash or antiquing solution. So we're going to grab those now. And I need to make sure my brush is wiped out really good here. And now we are going to go to white. So we have our OS431 white. And we're going to give that a good shake. OS431 white. And we'll get a nice pile of white. And now I'm going to paint all of my white areas white. And I'm actually going to just use my bigger brush and then just go in and paint everything white except where there's color so the, like the broom is brown I'm going to paint over my um, frame here because that'll make our metallic color go on easier and I'm just going to paint up to my clothes and my mittens and it's okay if I get white on them because we don't have to waste time lining that out. We'll line that out with the color, the colors instead. And just brush our white on all our white areas here. And just brush back and forth. So you um, like there's a nice big puddle ridge there. You want to brush that out. You don't want to have ridges in there because when you're dry brushing your um, or antiquing it, that'll would leave a it would catch the color and it would be really obvious then that it's there. So you do want to brush it out nice and smooth. So you can see it's really, really quick, pretty quick ornaments to do. So we'll brush our whole back. 
with our white. And then um, we did, I do have gold on the back, but we'll do that after it's antiqued. And rather than follow all those little lines, um, we're just going to paint the whole thing white. So do we have any other questions? Like how do the blue ornaments, let's see if I can see the question. How did you do the blue ones? So those were the color washing that we did at the very beginning of the video. We mixed our paint with 50% water and 50% paint. Um, I started on the back, I painted the back side, and then I sponged it off with a damp sponge, taking the color off of the high spots, and then went to the sides and then to the front. And then next week we will be dry brushing those. Um, so our videos are saved, so if you didn't see the beginning of it, you won't be able to see it while we're on live. But once the live is over, um, you can go and watch the video to see what we did. So I'm just getting a holder here so I don't have to keep touching my white area with my blue fingers. Um, so the videos are always saved on our, on our video tab. And then Courtney does upload them to YouTube as well. Um, but you do have to wait till after the show is over for that. And then YouTube, she usually does um, later. And what that doesn't happen tonight, that'll be tomorrow or, or whenever she has time. Um, I've been trying to do it on Friday morning. Courtney's been trying to do it Friday morning, but I know um, this Friday she's probably not going to be able to do it. We get, we're having a kind of a business meeting to discuss some some plans for the rest of the year, something we haven't even had time to do um, since the beginning of the year that we should have and just haven't had the time to do it. So tomorrow we're going to do a few of those things. So I'm just getting all my white areas painted white, which is basically my background. And then um, right in, in his coat, um, there's just a little bit of his little snow snowball of his body. And then we also have his little face, so we'll get that white as well. Um, don't worry about getting his little carrot white. Just go ahead and get it white. It's not going to hurt. We will cut, touch that up with our rust when we get to our um, face. So I need some more of our white. And then again, we will be antiquing th this piece um, once it's completely painted. And we won't do it right after the white, we'll do it when the whole piece is completely done. Um, so I'm just filling in our background now with our white and our snowman. And I'm not being real particular about it. It's okay if it gets on the broom and the mittens because we will uh, paint that out, uh, line it out when we're painting those areas with our color. And I'm just going back and making sure that there's no yellowish bisque coming through or no bisque coming through. We want it solid white. So do we have any other questions going on? How do you do the blue ones? Do you water the navy down? Yep, that is what we did. We just talked about that. So Let's see. So again, you want your paint on there nice and smooth, so make sure you brush it out. Get in between his coat there because there is just a little bit of white right there. Okay, so now we can set him aside. And then I need a little more white. And we'll start with her. Again, we're just going to paint the white areas white. I'm a lot of, I usually like to save a few brushes just for white. That way when you're um, painting with them, you don't have any residue of the prior colors coming out in your white and you have a nice true white. Um, I haven't done that here at Courtney's but at the classroom I, I do have my own set that I keep just for white and it really does keep your white nice and white. Again she's got a little her little body is in here between her coat and her mittens so you want to get that little bit of white in there also. And I think Courtney's fully are you fully stocked on brushes now again or not? She thinks she is, okay. So we did get a big brush order in when the when you guys' box shipped. Um, 
we're just brushing our white on here getting it on nice and smooth I need a little bit more and we did get medium blue in also we had been out of that for a while and we got the medium blue um, dunking in again too so some of the supply chains are getting a little better some are getting a little worse um, paper is one of the getting it worse um, so that's one of the things we got to talk about tomorrow what we're get a plan going here because we do use a lot of paper for you guys for our boxes so we got to make sure we have cardstock and cardboard and all that good stuff again I'm just painting the whole the whole back back with our white I'm not like lining out my snowflakes because we'll do that with the gold um, so we don't need to do it with the white too and again, I'm going to stick my stick in there and my finger, and then I can kind of keep him from wobbling around. And now we'll get the rest of our white on here. Um, so Cordy says we had a question um, what we're painting for August. So Cordy's been teasing. Um, teasing you guys, and I told her we couldn't tease you anymore. Mostly. <laughs> so she wants to know if anyone knows figured out. figured out what we're going to be showing you guys when we're done tonight what August box is if anyone has figured it out one of one someone of kind of got it um, someone kind of got it because she put hot 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 um, one of the ladies Rita did figure it out a couple weeks ago and she actually messaged me what it was and she was right um, and now I have the sample painted, but um, we're going to tweak the sample a little bit more so that it'll actually be a, a different sample. Um, but it's just, you'll see when, once we show it to you tonight um, what's going on with that. You um, can take it in any direction. Um, yep, you can take it in any direction. Um, it's going to be a really fast project, so I may um, do another sample so that if you wanted to order... Um, a second one, you'd ha probably have to get a second box though because it's you're not we're not going to get two in one box, and then the shipping is nine ninety nine then, um, so that could be an option too. Um, so we'll probably end up painting it two ways, um, just because it's probably only going to take like one and a half um, shows to do what we're going to do. It's that it's that simple, but it's really cool, <laughs> and you guys will see in a little bit what what's up, but. Um, it's a mold I've wanted for a long time and just never never got and we never came across when we were mold hunting either so we ordered them from Mako so we have Mako molds for um, August and October and actually um, I was thinking about it today because I poured the October ones and August and October will go very well together so that's kind of cool too um, kind of didn't think of that till now, but um, they'll go together. So again, I'm getting in her little um, snow here that's between her little shirt because it's like her little body getting her face. So has anybody figured out what it is? Um, is the surprise a certain piece or a new technique? It's, um, it's both, actually, and it's two techniques. Um, two techniques and something we haven't done before. Not in the whole two years that we've been um, doing our boxes. Uh, I think you guys have probably heard about it in the past. Different people have done it. Um, so it's just it's just really cool and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time and um, took, took the time to figure it out and do it and we can actually offer it in the box so it's really cool. So I have all my white on here. So you can see this goes pretty quick too. And I just got everything white. So now we'll bring the other one back and make sure we have no fleas. And I kind of got a flea here where my fingers were up in there. So I'm just looking for any, um, the bisque is a little bit off-white compared to the white paint. So I'm just looking for any little off-white area. Um, we'll probably do this new technique again. So, um, I was thinking about it, doing it for the Christmas box, but I got to talk to Courtney and see what she thinks about that. 
So a little extra work involved um, with it, I would say, but um, my nephew's wife is helping us with that, and I think the great nephews will even get on, in on it. So, all right, so we have those guys painted nice and white, and we're going to wash out our brush. No Mod Podge. No Mod Podge. Nope, no Mod Podge. I haven't um, brought myself to do Mod Podge on <laughs> ceramics. <laughs> I know people do it, and it can be kind of cool, but I haven't brought myself to do it. So, not sure we'll do Mod Podge. Um, but that's a good thought. You might love it. Um, Mod Podge is like a very old, it's like from the 60s and 70s. But it's kind of style. Um, yeah, it's back in style. Okay, so then our number two is to paint the hats, the coats, and the beard. Anything red, we are now going to paint with rust. Um, how are we doing on time? Let's see. Someone put a gourd question mark. Hot, hot, hot. Let's put it that way. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> so we have our rust. You can use the Doc Holiday rust, which is DH28. Or you can use the Duncan rust. Um, that works also. And then because we have little, little areas, I'm actually going to start with a liner. Um, it got this baby wore off, but I think it's our Royal Majestic 4595 liner. Um, so Cordy says these are back in stock too. So you do want to dip your um, liner into water and then pat it onto your paper towel. That again conditions your um, bristles and keeps the paint from going up into the ferrule. So I'm just going to dip into my rust. So her her whole cape and hat are red. And so is his hat and cape, so we're going to start with rust on those areas. Um, I do like to start with rust um, underneath any of my reds. It just helps them cover a lot nicer. Um, so I'm just going to line this out. We're just going to paint this just like, you, like we did way back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s before dry brushing um, became so popular. Um, so I'm just going to take my rust. And I'm using a liner and I'm just going to line out around my pieces that are red or my clothing that's red. Did you tell me what time it was or not? Almost 8. Almost 8. Okay, so we'll get this the red done here then probably. So we're just going to line this out. And then you can switch to a bigger brush to fill in if you want, but this is kind of little pieces so I... Um, just did my whole area with my um, liner brush and I'm holding my hand um, I like to rest it on the table and then I like to rest that painting hand right on my piece so I can have nice straight um, steady steady lines when I'm lining it out and you want to go right where the red and the white meet you don't want to go past the white with your rust because then it's going to look like it, it don't belong there so you want to get that little sweet spot right where they meet do I need to go something or? And it'll probably take two coats because we do. I do have some white under there. So again, I'm just lining it out using a liner. And I guess I probably have blue on my hand, so I got blue on his face. We'll probably have to touch that up later, but that's okay. So just lining out all his little red areas with rust. Um, some people will use gray also, and, or instead of the rust. Um, I, I just kind of like the rust because it's in the red family. Just as long as it's not that bright white because that... Um, red red just struggles to cover then. We're just painting out our rust here, getting a nice layer of that on there. So what do we got? Comments going on or not? What size liner? Um, what size was this, Courtney? It's a 450. Oh, 50. Oh, 50. I think Courtney um, has these. We'll probably have, well, do you have enough to have for the next week? Yeah, we'll have some next week. She'll probably throw in the show because you can add all that stuff to your box. And then as long as it fits in there, it ships for free. So we have a question if the stuff on the 22nd is on sale. 
A few things will be on sale. Some will just be the regular price. It's just to show, basically, to show you guys stuff that we have um, that you can fit in your boxes, and it, and it, um, and then you can add a second box if you want, because a lot of people have trouble getting bisque, bisque or paint and supplies, and um, we've had. Like every month we do get message like, do you sell paint or do you sell brushes? So people still don't realize that we do that. Um, so that's kind of why we want to do that. And then it does ship for free in your box as long as it fits in your box. And then if you need a second box, it's $9.99 for the shipping. And then Courtney's going to have giveaways on top of it to make it really fun. So I think everyone um, seemed to have fun last time. So... I don't think she's got any more blind bisque, bis though, do you? That you I don't know what bit. it is? Oh, you do have some oh, yet? I don't have any blind, but I mean... I you know what I mean? That's wrapped stuff that you don't know what it is. No, just did anybody figure out what they were? Oh, so anybody that had bisque that didn't have a label on it that we... I think it was those witches. Were they witches or not? Paula got one. Paula got one? Was it a witch one. Paula or not? We thought they were witches just by feeling the bubble wrap. Maybe Kathleen got the other one. Maybe Kathleen, she says. Oh, so Patty says it was a blast. Denise says it was fun. Yeah, so we're going to have fun again, you guys. We're going to have some giveaways, too, and um, just have some fall-themed things and Halloween-themed things and probably throw in some Christmas stuff, too. I don't know. Whatever I get poured and cleaned. Um, stuff that fits in your box that would fit fit in your box basically um, it's going to be hard for August though because that box um, your piece is actually going to fill up that box pretty darn good so I'm not sure how much Courtney can get in there I know she can get some of the new inserts in there because they're flatter um, but beyond that I'm not sure oh and I do have some other ornaments that I poured those are flatter too so they'll fit too oh, yeah, it's a wide piece. Wide it's tall. wide and tall, so it's going to take up a lot of the box. Um, but you can always get that second box if you buy too much or if it don't fit. The things that I did pour are things that would fit in that box. Mm -hmm. I hope, I'm hoping most of them, so um, that's kind of, kind of look at it that way that, oh, this will fit, so I'm going to pour it. So I'm just lining out with our rust anywhere as red would go. I did more cleaning, so I do have some of that stuff. Well, Courtney said she did more cleaning, so she does have some more. I probably have a couple more of those um, over-fired truck inserts, too. I think there's a Halloween one and another one. Because okay. they're just sitting on the shelf, so if you guys yeah. um, don't mind, I mean, there's really nothing wrong with them, just the kiln. Um, I had some trouble with that kiln, and I have a pyrometer now, so I can actually monitor it. The whole time that it's firing and I, if it doesn't shut off when it's supposed to I can shut it off just by looking at the pyrometer and knowing um, it's at the temperature that it's supposed to be so you kind of solve to check it then that could be a problem so just painting our rust on here going back and putting in any little second layer if it needs it you um, so looking at the hat now, there are areas I can see through. You do want to have a nice coverage of your rust. You don't want to leave it like that because then your red is going to cover like that and have bad spots and dark, light spots and dark spots. So you do want your rust nice and even and fully covered. You don't want to have those white areas, so you want to go back and give it a second coat if it needs it. Um, that way your red will cover really well. Oh, yep, I was on there. It was a really interesting class. I, I really liked the um, watercolored look to the leaves that he, that Michael was doing. That was look like. Um, yep, it was the stroke and coat stuff that, um, we're, we, that he used on the cobblestone, so it's stuff we have, too. We just don't have any of the rubber leaves. Can you use the technique? Um, possibly. So Cordy asked if he could use that technique on... With acrylics, I mean, I, I do water down the acrylics sometimes for a watercolor. Um, yeah, for like blushing their cheeks or if my um, dry brushing fills in my crevices and I lose my um, background or my base coating color, I 
Um, like my black, I can, you can water that down to make a watercolor and go back and um, line out your lines a little bit and that'll put the black back in them instead of going with straight black. Huh? You look like you committed a crime. I committed a crime? Well, at least they're not red and they're blue. No, you're Well, yeah. At least it's not red. Oh, yeah, if you think I, I committed so. a crime. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's see. Someone says get a second label ready. Uh, she's probably going to have to get a couple separate second labels ready, you guys. Because I've been pouring some pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah. I have to contain myself when I go to the storage unit because um, when I was waiting for the um, semi to come on Monday I actually logged one whole row in the new storage unit that we hauled from the garage and then it was some of it was molds that were on the other pallets so you come across stuff it's like oh man I forgot we had this oh I want to pour it <laughs> oh the table's full you can't pour it Actually, there's a really cute ghost that's lying on his side, and he says, Boo, I think that was a TL mold. I might pour that bugger yet. Well, I'm just trying to get all the molds logged so we can find everything, because um, usually the molds that people want are the ones that aren't logged, and I don't know where they are. So I'm just switched now to our other ornament. We're talking so much, I didn't tell you guys what I'm doing. So I switched to our um, Lady with the Holly, and now I'm... Um, lining everything out that she has in red with our rust before we go to red. Huh? These are yeah, these are piddly. Yep, compared to just dry brushing it. Um, but actually, this is kind of the old technique, the way they used to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> you can cover it with snow. Well, your, her hood you covered with snow. Oh, so yeah, the the front. Up. Yeah, you can kind of mess up if you get, because like, we put snow on her, um, around the edge of her face there. Basically, if you have any mistake, just cover it with snow. Oh, Cordy says, so if you got any mistake, just cover it with snow. I don't know if I'd go with that, but that might be a little extreme. That'd be my solution. That's her solution, she says. Well, maybe she's thinking about painting yet. Absolutely. Uh, she says absolutely not, you guys. I mean, they just take a little time. It's not that bad. You're lining a lot of stuff up. Huh? You're lining a lot of stuff up. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not like it's going to take a week to do it. I think anything that'll be the October box. Oh, wow, you guys. Cordy says if she paints anything, it's the October box. Woohoo! I wonder what we could do that she could paint those. I'll have to think of something. If it was glaze, we could probably get her to glaze them, but we're not glazing. We only do non-fire techniques because um, boxes are really based on people that kind of didn't have access to kilns, and I know a lot of you don't, so that's why we don't do um, fire techniques like glazing. Um, we do do glazing at the classroom, though. So actually, they've been doing a lot of glazing lately. Um, they're kind of into making vases with crystal glazes on them right now for Christmas presents. Um, frogs with glaze, turtles with glaze. Um, someone made a snow white with, I'm pretty sure it was under glazes underneath it. So, um, but vases have really been popular and it's something I would have never guessed would have been popular. Kind of like the Donna's inserts. Those were like the last things on my list of getting um, when we were mold digging, but they've been super, super popular. So you ne you just never know what everyone wants. So um, we had two nativities get done. Um, we had one of our ladies is up to nine Christmas trees, um, all glazed. Next, she wants to do um, nativity scenes with the base coating it black and then doing the metallic rub-on, um, which we did that last year, a year ago. And that's really cool, the metallic rub-ons, except that you can't um, actually buy that anymore. But I've been using the furniture paste uh, metallics. That works really well. 
And actually, I sh I'm going to have to try something. I just thought of something. That we might be able to uh, make our own rub on with a certain little product that we're going to be using. All right, so I'm just continuing on here and just lining out all my little red areas with our rust. Trying to get them right at that little sweet spot where they meet the white and not going onto the white so it looks like it's overpainted. And then I just do, you could switch to a bigger brush when you're filling it in, but I, it's such a little area, I just stay with my liner and um, finish it out with my liner. So let's see, it's been really nice pouring in the garage because I have more room, more room for greenware, more room for molds. Um, have the pouring machine out there, so it's nice to be able to make the clay out there and not get the dust all over the house. Um, I did get pails last Saturday from the bakery, so I'm um, able to make um, slip ahead so because slip has to sit for 48 hours once it's made before you can use it so I always have to make sure that I was like making my slip ahead um, so now I can do it ahead when I have time and put it in the pails um, so Cordy asked if Harbridge's video froze a lot last night yeah Facebook's been having problems with that I thought maybe it was your phone no it's Facebook okay. so well, Bugger. It's a bugger, yeah. It's like you, it doesn't do it consistently. No. So I'm just lining out all our red areas here and getting her little coat, and then we'll go to her little strings. So I guess we'll our next thing that we're looking at it will be our Christmas box and our, our so our November box and then our December box. Um, we'll have to get those ordered next. The molds for those. I don't know what um, we were even thinking about at all. I did see that there's like an eight inch welcome snowman with like a with toboggan. Is that something you would like, Courtney? You think or not? Yeah, with Christmas lights on it. The welcome one. Like they, oh, they have it in a little size instead of the big size. Like it's only eight inches. Eight and a half inches or something. We gotta talk tomorrow, okay. <laughs> so we have to get all the different opinions on what what could be the Christmas box. We had talked about angels, too, at one time, didn't we? Yeah, that's, that's what we were doing. That's what we're doing? Okay, we can do that, because then I have ideas for that. Yeah. Okay. And then December is usually um, snowmen, but we haven't done penguins in a last year, so maybe we'll do penguins instead of snowmen. I don't know. We'll have to see. And then what did we do for January? Like birds or something, huh? Alright, so we have her with her little one coat. Everything's lined out. I left her little white where her little body is um, on the cape on the bottom. And now we're just going to go back and cover up, um, give another layer. Because you can see it's real streaky looking. And we don't want that because then that's how our red is going to cover. So we want to just come back real quick and just give another coat of ru um, rust. So you have a nice solid coverage of your rust. And that way your red will cover really well. So if your rust is spotty and streaky, your, that's how your red is going to cover. So you'd want to make sure you have a nice solid um, rust cover, color of coverage. So we'll just do that real quick. Let's see, it hasn't been terribly hot here like it was um, a couple weeks ago, but it, I think it's like in the upper 80s now for the next few days again. Cordy had a little bit of a storm down there. They actually lost one of their little trees. Boulevard. The boulevard tree. It's probably only like 10 feet tall though, right? It's like a replacement tree. Yeah, it was a replacement tree to start out with. It wasn't like a seedling tree. 
No, it wasn't a seedling because it's been in since you guys moved. It was a full Yeah. Younger. Be interesting if they um, replace it for you. Yeah, they will. Oh, okay. The city is responsible for anything. Oh. Wonder if that's like a windy area there or something that. You know how like our front is windy by the sidewalk. Wait, those shear winds. Yeah. Oh, well, Cordy says they had the shear winds. I know they had a lot of rain down here because there's like water everywhere yeah. on the way down. It was torrential. Um. I had a little bit, but not like what they had. Um, and we were supposed to have storms yesterday, so that I didn't actually fire the kiln or make slip in the afternoon because I didn't want to lose power in the middle of either one. Um, when I make the slip, it actually has to mix for two and a half hours, and then it sits for two, 48 hours before it can be used. Um, so I didn't want the power to go out, and then I couldn't finish mixing, so... We're just getting our little extra coat of rust on here so we have a nice even coverage and it's not splotchy or streaky. I think we're supposed to have really good weather now through the weekend, although like in the upper 80s. So Let's see, my day lilies and oriental lilies have started to bloom at my house. Huh? Yours are half done? You must have early ones then. Oh, yeah, because you're down here. That's true, too. All right, so we got her looking pretty good. I'm going to lay her down. I just want to come back and check him to make sure his rust looks really good and I don't see white through it anywhere. I may have to touch up here just a little bit again. It's really important to have that nice, solid coverage so that that red covers really well. So he needs just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll come back to her. Okay, so how are we doing on time? Quarter after. Quarter after. It's like a countdown, you guys. A countdown to the August box. Like I can't wait to show you. <laughs> I'm worse than, I'm as bad as you guys. You guys want to see it as bad as I want to show it to you. I don't know if Cordy likes it, though. She didn't even tell me if she liked it now when she's seen it today. It's, it's better than what it was. Oh, she says it's better than what it was. Oh, good Lord. So it's same for next month. That's, yeah. It's like the fourth, fourth trial of it. It's the best one so far. I don't think I like the one. You still don't like it? I don't care for the backdrop color, like everything else. Oh my goodness. Well, you didn't like the green and you didn't like the yellow. Nope. I don't know what to tell you. Wow. Okay. So I think we're actually, oh, and then we're going to put rust on the nose too. Just so we'll put rust on the nose and then we'll call it good for this week because I don't want to start the red because then we're going to go past our 8.30. So we'll put the rust on the nose as long as we got the rust on the um, palette here. And then anybody have any questions about our three different um, techniques we did now tonight? So we did the blue was our color washing. We made our 50% paint and 50% water. Um, put it on half and then wiped it back off with the sponge, wiping the high spots, leaving it down in the crevices. And then the purple ones, we just base coated the solid purple. And now the red and green ones, we're going to actually just paint out and then we'll be antiquing those. Um, so now here I actually have my rust onto my white. So that's, um, I went past my little line. So I'll have to go back and touch that up later. But um, that's where we are with those guys. So they're looking pretty good. Um, so we can show you. So we have our painted set that we're going to antique. We have our base coated purple set that we are going to dry brush. And then we have our blue set that we color wash and we will dry brush also. So hopefully you guys like that. You learned three different techniques here in one box, so that's pretty cool. Um, so then this is what they're going to be looking like. 
Here's our blue ones. Here's our purple ones. And then here is that we are base coated and we'll paint and dry brush. And then we have our red ones that we are going to paint and then, excuse me, um, antique. So that is our beginning of our Christmas in July box. It looks pretty cool. Um, again, a good starter box if anyone's interested. We still have some. You can go on brendasbrushstrokesandbiss.com to get them. Um, but that is your July box. Are they in the screen good so they can see them? Mm -hmm. I'm too far left. Yeah. I mean, can they see them? Yeah. So that is your July box. Again, we have our color washing, our base coating, and then this will be our antiquing. Um, so it looks like you guys are giving us thumbs up, so you must like them. So let's put those out of the way. And now it's coming. She's getting it. Are you waiting? Give us a thumbs up or a heart or something that you're waiting. You're waiting. And let's see, what do we have? Oh, well, look at it. It's just like the fireworks are going off. Okay, hopefully you guys like this. Huh? Oh, we don't have a name for it. Okay, maybe you guys will have to give us some names ideas. So here it is. Hopefully you can see it. It is a gourd. The large Mako gourd, and it has a dragonfly on it. So let's see. Is, um, um, waiting for the tablet to catch up. So we have Welcome Autumn on it, and then we have more dragonflies on it. And I'm waiting for the cab tablet to catch up, and it's like really far behind. Oh, That's sweet. Crazy. Wow. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. So we have a large Mako gourd. Um, so you can see it is going to fill up your whole box. And then we have our dragonfly. And you can also add extra dragonflies, Courtney, I think. Okay. Um, I think you can get them in there. And, I, and I'll have extras of them because we have seven molds and it pours two at a time. So we have 14 at a time pouring okay. instead of seven. Then, um, so the back, the back of this one is like messed up because it I, was a trial and error thing. Because we are going to silk screen, you guys. Our Welcome Autumn will be on the front and the back, and it will be silk screened. And we will be including your silk screen with your um, gourd. Along with the Welcome Autumn, you will have a Dragonfly um, silk screen. So that has how cool is that? And then our background technique, I base coated it and then I left it dry. And I used a wall painting technique actually, where I used saran wrap and bundled it up and then I used gold and hot orange and I dabbed that all over it very lightly uh, my great nephew said to keep it nice and light they kind of helped with their opinions too um, so it's not overly done um, so we're going to do a new technique using saran wrap on your gourd then once that's dry we will take our silk screen and um, this is kind of the example I don't have the one um, that's on there we're actually going to make this autumn wel welcome autumn just a little bit bigger. So that will be a little bit bigger. So I, I don't have the new one. Um, but this will be the silk screen. So it actually has silk on the back, and we created those. It crossed her mind, but then thought, no way you do that. Ah, yeah, well, we got to try everything, you guys. So we are silk screening. So you will get a silk screen that says welcome autumn. And then you'll get the silk screen with the um, dragonflies. And then we'll also get the silk screen medium to thicken your paint for the um, silk screening. And yes, the dragonfly is glued on. And then there's also a piece of rope. You'll get a piece of rope for the stem. And that will be glued in there. So that is your August box. Now we need to come up with a name. So if anybody's got a good name. Maybe post it in the um, in the comments. So Claire asks, can you hang it? We'll be giving you a piece of a foot of rope so you can actually loop it through there and tie a knot, and then you could probably hang it. Um, so let's see. Denise says she's excited. Linda loves it. Paula says sweet. Marianne says cool. We got yay. We got love it. Um, so are you guys surprised? Are you happy that we're doing something completely different like silk screening? The Dragon Gourd. Okay. Welcome Autumn Works. 
Oh, yeah, because that's actually the name on it. So There we go. We'll do that. Welcome Autumn Works. Welcome Autumn. Sure. Yeah. That's a that's good one. Um, so I, I did, this is my first time silk screening as well, so I kind of have it figured out so I can actually walk you guys through it. I got some tips for you. Um, we, we, and I'll have a couple ways, like I did different colors on here, but the girls didn't like the different colors, so I just went with the black brown. Um, but we'll do so, some other, we'll do a, we'll do this one, and then if you want to add another one, um, Courtney, you'll have to see if it'll fit in the box or if you have to get a second box. We'll probably do a second box or a second gourd um, painted some way and some technique because this one's not going to take very long. It's actually very quick and easy to do. Probably in two nights we'll have this done. Um, so we will be silk screening and we'll be doing a saran wrap technique on our um, background. So And then we'll have uh, Welcome Autumn on the back of here too. This was just another one I tried. Um, with the other colors that they didn't like, so I, um, it won't be like that. It'll actually be like this side, and then your Welcome Autumn is going to be a little bit bigger. So, can you reuse um, so Courtney asked if we can reuse the silk screens. Yes, you can. If you put it in the sink and put a little Dawn dish soap on it and spray it with your sprayer or, or just massage it and run water on it, you can actually um, reuse these a few times, actually quite a few times, so... Um, they're pretty cool. So we'll be making your silk screens for you. We'll, we'll include the rope, the dragonfly, the gourd, and then the uh, medium, the silk screen medium to thicken your paint. And we'll walk you guys through that. And saran wrap you'll probably have just to do that. If you don't have the saran wrap, you can use a, a plastic grocery bag. That'll work too. That's just a painting technique on walls that people do. So and it, it worked on here. So. That is your August box. So I hope you guys enjoy silk screening. I hope it was worth the wait and all the little um, teasers Cordy gave you guys. But I'm like thrilled with it and hope you guys are too. It's the large gourd from Mako and then the Mako dragonfly. And it will pretty much fill up your box. So Cordy says, Paula, was it worth the wait? And yes, you can order extra dragonflies. Just send Cordy a message and she will um, put you down for extra dragonflies. She doesn't have prices or anything yet because I just brought this down today. Same with the paint list. Um, same with the paint She's got the paint list today too, but um, she'll have to get all that for you guys. There's not no new colors and actually There's maybe only colors. six colors. We only have rust, um, gold, hot orange, real red black brown and then a touch of lemon peel so there's not a lot of colors either so well Paula says yes <laughs> so all right you guys so that is your August box we'll get back to your um, Christmas box next week and then we'll also have the after party um, bis show brushes paint sales so well, oh but like you don't like surprises well I think this is a pretty good surprise I'm like I couldn't wait to do this guy because I've just wanted to do a gourd for a long time and um, I think I might paint a Halloween scene on the other one with the haunted house and the moon and the witch. So I'm thinking that might be what the second one will be. Um, so you guys might want, even want to get a second gourd because this will be done like in two two nights. So. so there is that. And we'll check in with you guys next week. Otherwise, enjoy your week. Um, Courtney put the link for the pre-order, but she doesn't have the details on there yet. But um, once she gets it on there, then you guys can um, pre-order. I kind of do expect the box to sell out. So if you're not a subscriber, you may want to get it sooner than later. But subscribers are guaranteed the box. Because um, we will be silk screening, and that's something we haven't done in the two years we've been doing this. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, can you buy extra silk screens? I'm working on that too. So we'll, um, we'll see what we can do. Um, so we'll check back with you guys' messages that you're putting on the post and hope you guys love the August box and we'll have fun with our... If you're ordering anything, like, message me. Um, McCordy says if you want to order anything, um, just message her because then she can put it on the Excel sheet and keep track of it better. Um, it's hard too in the comments, but... Um, um, she will try to get two in the box tomorrow. I fired two of them today so she can see if she can get two in the box. I, I don't think she's going to be able to get two in the box. Um, yeah, it's going to be really, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, but you can get a second box with the $9.99 shipping. So. And then we'll have the extra bisque if you want to add extra bisque next week too. So 
Um, we'll know after tomorrow because like I said, I, I fired two of them today so she can um, wrap them up and, and try them. And, um, but she has a special box she just brought in the room so she thinks that one might work. So hold on, you guys. Man, he's so big. He's big, yeah. He's big, you guys. So. He's not small at all. She don't even think she can get two in the special box. I don't think so. You probably have to get a second box with the yeah. $9.99 shipping if you want to do the second oh, one. It's um, really tight. But yeah, he, he's a big guy. It's not it's not little at all. So can't wait to start with him. But we got to finish our um, Christmas in July box first, and then I'll work on, on the second project. So um, otherwise, have a great week, you guys, and can't wait to... Um, paint again next week, so have fun. Thank you.